Welcome to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. Today, we're going to do some multiplication. But we're not going to do the typical multiplication that you might learn in school, right? Unfortunately. Today, we're going to take it back about maybe, I don't know, I want to say like 2,000, 3,000 years, maybe 4,000, to ancient Kemet. Modern day, it's known as Egypt. But many, many years ago, it was known as ancient Kemet by our ancestors. My ancestors called it ancient Kemet. Um, another name for it was Tameri. And, you know, because it was an advanced civilization, of course they had to have mathematics, right? An advanced civilization can't exist without mathematics. So today we're going to talk about one of the ways in which they did multiplication. All right? We call this Kemetic multiplication. Let me write that up here. All right, so I got two examples up here, all right, 24 times 18. Now, the Kemetic multiplication method is based on doubling, right? It's a system of doubling, okay? Now, this is how you set it up. So if we look at example one, we're going to write 24, which is one of our factors, and 18, our other factor, and we're going to draw a horizontal line underneath, all right? Now, underneath of the 24 in this first column, think of this as column one and column two. Underneath of this 24, we start out with the number 1. Boom. And then we just keep doubling, right? So we start out with the number 1, and we double the number 1. 1 becomes 2. And then we double the number 2. 2 becomes 4. Double the 4. 4 becomes 8. We double the 8. The 8 becomes 16. Now, right about now, you're probably wondering, like, okay, so how long are we going to do this? Like, when do we stop? Do we ever stop? We stop at 16. Now, why do we know? How do you know we stop at 16? And why do we stop at 16? Because you don't want to exceed the number that you started with. Now, if I was to double 16, that would take me to 32. And 32 exceeds 24. So that's how we know when to stop, all right, in this row. So keep that in mind because that's very critical. Make sure you write that down in your notes. I stop when I get to the number that is right before the number that would exceed the original number. So if my original number is 24, right, I can't go to 32 because 32 is bigger than 24. So I stop at 16 because that's right before that number that's bigger than the number I started with, which is 24. All right. Then we go to this column where the 18 is. All right. And we write an 18. We start out with that original number. So we write 18. And then we're doing the same thing in that column. We're doubling. We're doubling. So we double 18. And we know that that's 36, right? Now, this is also going to help us with our mental math skills, because if you don't know off the top of your head from memorization what 18 times 2 is, then you can think about it in terms of like the distributive property or breaking 18 down into two parts. Right. So we could say, OK, 18, I break that down into a 10 and an 8. Right. And then I'm multiplying that by 2. So I'm doing 10 times 2. That gives me 20. I'm doing 8 times 2. That gives me 16. What's 20 plus 16? 36. All right. Or if you want to break that down even further, 16 can be broken down into 10 and 6. So I'm doing 20 plus 10, which is 30, and 30 plus 6, which is 36. And now I'm going to double 36. And when I double 36, I get 72. 30 times 2 is 60. 6 times 2 is 12. 60 plus 12 is 72. Another thing you want to do when you're doing this comedic multiplication is you want to make sure your rows line up. So this 1 should match up with this 18. This 2 should match up with this 36. This 4 should match up with this 72. All right? Then we're going to double 72. 70 times 2 is 140. 2 times 2 is 4. 140 plus 4 is 144. And then last but not least, 140. I got to do one more because I got one more number in this column. So all my columns have to, all the numbers in each column have to match up with each other. So now 144 times 2. 100 times 2 is 200, 40 times 2 is 80, that's 280, 4 times 2 is 8, so that's 288. All right, now, now that I did all my doubling, now what I got to do is I got to go back. I go back to the first column, and I say, okay, what combination, this is key, what combination of these numbers, 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16, will add up to 24? 
what combination of these numbers? Now, you want to start with the biggest number, right? Because you want to start with the number that's closest to 24. So I know 16 is close to 24. And then I know that I can add 8. 16 plus 8 is 24. So now this is how I get the answer. Whatever numbers I circled in this column, the numbers that they match up with over here, those are the numbers that have to be added together. Now, sometimes you might have every number in this column that needs to be added because you might have had to circle every number in the column. In this particular example, we only circled two numbers, 8 and 16, because 8 plus 16 equals 24. So the numbers that they match up with in this column get added together. All right? So now we do our addition. 4 plus 8, that's going to be 12. That's 2, carry the 1. 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 8 is 13, so that's 3, carry that 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. So our final answer is 432. 24 times 18 is 432. Now you probably learned like a whole bunch of other different methods of multiplication, and that's cool. We should have different methods to do things with, right? But it's good to just, you know, be able to experiment with different methods, understand different methods. You might think this is easier, this might be more efficient, it might not be as efficient, but at the end of the day, it also should help us, you know, get back in touch with our, our cultural DNA and some of our academic cultural DNA, as, as I would say, because our ancestors did this, right? This is not something that another group of people from another culture, from another geographic part of the world, you know, came into ancient Kemet or came into Africa and taught to our people. This is something that our ancestors discovered and were using successfully for many, many years. So that, at a, at a minimum, it should enhance the self-esteem and the self-confidence of people of African descent in terms of how they approach mathematics instead of just sitting in classrooms thinking, well, this ain't really for me anyway, because my people don't really do math. Your people do math. Your people been doing math. So just keep these types of things in mind. All right. Now let's jump into another example. All right. Another example, 19 times 71. Now, what do I want to write this at? I'm going to write this over here. All right, 19 times 71. I'm going to put the 19, I'm going to put the 71, draw the horizontal line, right? We do the same thing we did in this example, right? Under the 19, we start with a 1, and we just keep doubling. We just keep doubling. That's all we're doing. So we double 1, we get 2. We double 2, we get 4. We double 4, we get 8. We double 8, we get 16. Ah, now stop right there. Remember, how do I know when to stop? I stop doubling when the number would exceed the original number I started with. 16 times 2 is 32, but 32 is bigger than 19, so I, don't, I can't use 32. I stop at 16. Then we slide over here to this column, we do the same thing. We start with 71, and we double. Double 71, we get 142. Double 142, we get 284. We double 284, that means I'm going to double 200 to give me 400, I'm a double 80 to give me 160. That's 560. I'm a double 4 to get 8. So that's going to be 568. Right? Now, I got one more number to get. I got a double 568. All right? Now, the mental math, 500 times 2 is 1,000. 60 times 2, 120. 8 times 2, 16. All right? In case you need to visualize it, like written down, right? But you want to get into the habit of trying to, you know, manipulate all of this information in your head at the same time. But it may take practice. That's fine. It takes practice. So this is going to be 1136. 1,120, 1120 plus 16 is 1136. So we put 1136 down here. All right? Now, we want to look in this column and look for a combination of numbers that has a sum of 19. What combination of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers has a sum of 19? Of course, we start with the biggest number. The biggest number is 16, right? So we start with 16. I can't use 8 because that's going to be 24. I only need 19. I can't use 4 because that's going to give me 20, and I only need 19. But I can use 2. 2 is going to put me at 18, and then I can use 1. 16 plus 2 is 18. 18 plus 1 is 19. So now I'm going to use the corresponding numbers in the other column, and I'm going to add them up. All right? So let me pull these numbers down. Let me do this. Let me do 11, 36, 142. Make sure you line everything up according to place value. Line everything up according to place value, right? 
and then I'm going to have 71, right? So I got 6 plus 2, which is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. I got 3 plus 4, which is 7. And 7 plus 7 is 14. Write the 4, carry the 1. I got 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And then I got 1 plus nothing. So the 1 comes down, right? So that's my final answer. 1,349. 19 times 71. 1,349. And if nothing else, if this, uh, this method also helps us to become more familiar and more fluent with doubling numbers and how to do it and how to develop this skill and how to become better at doing this mentally. Because knowing how to double something, because if you know how to double, then you know how to quadruple. If you know how to quadruple, then you can multiply something um, by eight and so on and so forth. So it's really just about skill building. All right. It's about skill building and taking it back to our roots, our cultural roots, right? And, you know, doing it the way our ancestors used to do it. You know, it's like Sankofa. Go back and fetch it. Go find what our ancestors were doing and bring it forward and apply it in the 21st century in a way that can benefit us right here and now. All right. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the page. Please like the video. Share the video. Tell some people about this. Tell some teachers about it. Tell your friends about it. Tell whoever about it. Tell some parents about it. Um, this is something that I think is very important. And we're doing some, some important things over here at All This Math. All right? So, as always, please remember, there's all this math all around you. Peace.